<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, kids and lady kids, cough, cough, cough. This is the beginning of the bit. Cough, cough, cough. Get, start it here. It is time once again to get out your trapper keepers and your trapper set it free. And if you set it free and it comes back, then it was really meant to be. Because it's homework time once again on the old Poop on Film podcast. Yes, it is. <clears throat> People of the internet, remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. The Pope on Film podcast assigns homework to its listeners in the hopes of bettering them, nay, the world. Yeah. And this week, we are once again going all the way back to a homework genre that both Bunteen Plus and I are big, big fans of. Yes. Welcome once again, apparently I'm trying to set a record for the most times I say the phrase once again in this week's homework segment. So awesome. once again, once again, once again, I say welcome once again to the church crazy world. Once organist. again, church organist. Once again, we discuss Christian scare films. Dun, 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 dun. Bunny and I are both big, 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 big fans. Big, 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 big fans of Christian scare films. Big fans here at the Pope on Film. I still have a soft spot in my head for our last one. Rock, it's your decision. Yes. Did you know, Bun Meyer, that during the 70s, Captain and Tennille would end each and every concert they performed by letting Satan uh, splooge all over their faces? Uh, I actually used to watch that show, and but the costumes were by Bob Mackey. Okay, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean, there was it was artistically done. It was artistically done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and anyway, that's a true fact, and I learned that from the 1982 film Rock. It's your decision. I was. So this week, I was just, I don't, see, I don't know. I mean, Captain and Tennille was put out there as they were the new Sonny and Cher, okay? But the difference yeah. with Captain and Tennille is when they broke up, you just kept having to look at the captain and be like, how did you not know she was a lesbian? I mean, didn't it come up in yeah. conversation somewhere? Yeah, you, you'd think you're touring the world that this would probably come up at least once. Yeah. Yeah. So this week in our homework segment, we are going back to the world of Christian scare films with the legendary 1972 Ron Ormond Christian scare film, The Burning Hell. And I drew a little picture of uh, yeah. flames at the end of the word hell, and the flames is where all the sinners and liberals are. Nice. Now, nice. And this well, was this was this was an was awesome movie. This was yeah, a no, good this one. is a good one. This is a really good one. I really like I because I hadn't seen it before I chose it, so I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, and I was pleasantly surprised by just like it was everything I wanted it to be. You know, I, I, I I'm still leaning more toward uh, law enforcement's guide to satanic cults. Oh yeah, I'm still and and. Honestly, after having watched quite a few of these now, I got to give it to the production value of that film. <laughs> yeah. 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 Eleanor, you're fine. You're fine. I'm not giving you the whole bowl. You're going to spill it all over the floor if I give you the whole bowl. I'm not giving you the whole bowl. You're 11 months old. You're going to throw it all over the place. I'm going to have grape. I'm going to have grapes all over me. I'm going to be the grape man. You want your daddy to be made out of grapes? No, you don't. No, you don't. I'll give you a few extra, but you're not getting this whole bowl, Eleanor. So before we delve into this film, I want to talk about the writer slash producer slash director of this film, Mr. Ron Ormond. Any man who can go from making The Monster and the Stripper to making 
the Christian scare film, If Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do? That's someone <laughs> that is worth studying at length. Yeah. You know? Much like the director of Chesty Morgan. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's a, a interesting story, crazy story, bunch of twists and turns. His real name is Vic Naro. He actually he chose the name Ron because he he thought it sounded good, and he got his last name from a magician friend of his called Ormond McGill. So he just put those two together, and he became Ron Ormond. Ron, Ron Ormond began as a stage magician, and he toured the vaudeville circuit and the burlesque circuit, which eventually led him to Hollywood, where in the late 40s, he signed a contract to write, produce, and direct all of Lash LaRue's Western movies. Nice! Which, uh, you know, back in the day, Westerns were churned out just a mile a minute. So it didn't yeah. necessarily matter that Ron Orman knew nothing about motion pictures. Which is something I... Which is something that makes me kick myself in the ass all the time. Yeah. Because try as I have, I've never gotten to really like Westerns. There are like a handful of Westerns I like. Yeah. For the most, like, this is one of my most hated genres. Yeah. I'll take a musical. I'll take, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll I'll take Babes in Toyland and I'll take The Music Man and I'll take things like that before taking a taking a western. And just just as a filmmaker, how can I not? How can I live in fucking Colorado and not do a goddamn western? Isn't there a yeah. western somewhere? There's got to be a fresh take on it. You can make the world's first pot western. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what a pot western would look like, but you can make the first one. But 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 sorry, sorry for for tangenting it. No, it's fine. It's fine. That's what we're all about on the show. <laughs> so Ron Dorman was in the cheapy western business for a while, for like a decade. Uh huh. So when cheapy westerns went out of style, he just changed. He just changed his game. He started doing more and more exploitation movies. He made the film Teenage Bride, yeah. White Lightning Rod, the one we mentioned before, The Monster and the Stripper. And he made the vaguely famous film Mesa of Lost Women. Oh, okay. I've never seen it, but Neither I'm assuming I, it's an it's art a film about three women from Mesa, Arizona, who take the wrong bus and get lost at Fiesta Mall over by the Golfland Sunsplash. Yeah. That's what I'm assuming Mesa of Lost Women is about. I, it's just I, about Mesa, Arizona. I, I, I keep getting confused as to which one is worse between that one and, and Wild Women of Wongo. I think the Wongo one is, is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Because they just get so, those, they, they sound kind of similar. Yeah. So the guy was just your standard exploitation <laughs> filmmaker. He had his his hands in anything that would make him money. He started doing roller derby in the 50s, and he even had a TV show. Yeah? A roller derby TV show that he did in L.A. at the time, KTLA. He also wrote books on mysticism and psychic surgery. Uh, nice, okay. He also had a kid show called Seltzer's Little People, which featured some of the midgets from Wizard of Oz. Mm. So the guy was all over the place. The guy yeah. was basically, he had his fingers in anything that could make him a little bit of money. The guy dipped his toes in everything. Mm. He eventually even moved to Nashville because uh, the Nashville scene was kind of exploding. So he went over there and started filming movies and, and stuff with country acts. Yeah. So he was literally just all over the map. Then, in the very early 1960s, he was in a plane, and the plane was flying, as planes do, and yeah. there was a plane crash, and a bunch of people died, but he was one of the few survivors, and, and from that point on, uh, Ron Orman decided to become a devout, born-again Christian. But... And 
we can find some Christian films with that exact same plot line. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing. You can take the director out of the grindhouse, but you can't take the grindhouse out of the director because Ron Orman soon, soon after his uh, his uh, rebirth, he met a ridiculously over-the-top Southern Baptist preacher, all hellfire and brimstone, named Estes Prickle. <laughs> That's not a name. That is a fucking punishment. I don't know what he did in a former life to be named Estes Prickle, but his name is Estes Prickle. And they both decided to make movies to spread the word of God and their first film was the film I mentioned before, If Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do? Mm -hmm. Any extras were local churchgoers who gave money to make the film, basically like The Creeping Terror, but with a Bible. <laughs> okay. Apparently, Estes Prickle thought that Ron Ormond was just going to film one of his sermons. Oh, no! The man who made the monster and the stripper isn't just going to film a sermon. No. Oh, hell no. So if Footman Tire You, What Will Horses Do is this bizarre-ass film, and it's about what America would be like if the godless commies took over. Yes. It has violence, rape, beheadings, torture. A guy gets a bamboo shoved in his ear. Uh, there's a scene where kids, not a guy, Kids, young children get sharp bamboos shoved into their ears to puncture their eardrums so they can no longer hear the word of God. Oh. <laughs> Murder, oh. torture, rape. But here's the thing, oh. and this is this is a pattern in Ron Orman's quote unquote Christian films. Uh these films go over the top in what they show, but hey, it's a Christian film, so it's okay. Basically, Ron Orman, the ex the exploitation director, continues making cheap ass grindhouse exploitation horror films, but now he's hiding behind a fucking Bible, and that's so smart because if you say this film is a Christian film, you can get away with so much more shit. Yeah. His mm -hmm. 70s Christian films are ten times more graphic than his 50s and 60s grindhouse films. Yeah. So he got away with showing maggots devouring a person's face and a guy getting his head cut off in a uh, motorcycle I, I just, yeah. I yeah. just really appreciate any Christian scare movie that gives me a new curse word or curse phrase, I should say. What, what, what phrase was that? Fucking Moses' beard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Moses' beard. Yeah. But if you say it, you kind of sound like Thor, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It really. Fucking Moses' beard. You might think, you might think uh, uh, Thor, but I think uh, Anchorman. Oh, yeah? Sweet grandmother's spatula. <laughs> By Moses' beard. <laughs> Sweet Odin's raven. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm that's what I'm So the burning hell this week. What about that beard? So the burning hell this week's film is the second film that Roy Orman did with Estes Prickle. Yes. And it's a doozy, interesting postscript to this story after the burning hell this week's film estes prickle uh had a falling out with roy ormond roy ormond got pissed because both if footmen tire you what will horses do and the burning hell they toured they toured the nation it's basically like a touring carnival sort of thing yeah. Except instead of showing at like cheap grindhouse movie theaters across America, um, they're doing this traveling carnival at, at churches and getting money and getting a lot of money and saving people and yada, yada, yada. It made a ton of money. And 90% of it 
all went directly into the pocket of Estes Prickle. Yeah. Yeah, Estes Prickle ended up making a fortune from these two movies, and Ron Orman saw shit, so after these two movies, they had a falling out, and they didn't work together anymore. Oh, but, fuck. That, that, that. That's a Billy Man... That's a Billy... Oh, I forget his fucking name. Billy Zane? Billy Bob Thornton? Billy no. from the Circle? Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell. That's a go. real <laughs> Billy Mitchell move. Yeah. Billy Bob, Joe Bob. Right there. Yeah, so unfortunately, and you're the preacher, right? You're the preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we only have two films uh, from Estes Prickle and uh, Ron Orman. But goddamn, Ron Orman continued making Christian films. And he made a ton of them. But it's these first two with crazy ass old man Estes Prickle. No, and they see this this whole story just burns me up, you know? Yeah. You 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 just don't fuck with a guy who's forgotten more about whores than you've read in your Bible, and that's fucking considerable. You know? And has come to the Lord anyway. Yeah. You know? You yeah. might as well just be holding up his severed head. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, so I, I love the Burning Hell. It's a doozy. Everything that I hoped the movie would be, it was, and a bunch more crazy shit. So, the film opens with a wonderful shot of the U.S. Women's Hairspray Choir <laughs> singing, yeah. singing an unintelligent hymn while fire burns. Was that not a scary, scary group of a group of people? Yeah, I believe they were if you get frightening to look at. I believe that if you get scientists no. and you study the exact moment when the holes in the ozone layer began, I believe that you would find that it is right when they started filming the Burning Hell. Yeah. On account of the massive amounts of hairspray that were used for the making of this film. <laughs> so, Maxwell, close the door, close the door, close the door, close the door. Close but that's just because Jesus yeah, loves the little birdies. Yeah. So, so then we find the, the true star of the film, America's greatest Ross Perot impersonator. Yeah, no, let's stay on the crowd. I mean, this crowd oh, no, looked like this. This was a a group. This was a family shot of American fucking gothic. Oh you yeah, know? and you just know because of the story of the making of, of the story of Ron Orman. You just know that all of those people singing are only in this film because they donated money for the making of the film. You know? Yeah. Not because they look pretty or they're in any way good singers. No, they <laughs> gave money to make this film. I could swear I saw a riffraff in the crowd. I swear to God, you could shoot those women in the hair, and the bullet would just bounce right back at you. They they all just looked angry and mean and sad. And they were basically singing a fucking dirge to our Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, and you know, you know who would fit in there perfectly. Hmm. Carrie White's mother. Yes. Yes. They would not even notice her. Yeah. So then, uh, we meet the star, the, the world's greatest Ross Perot impersonator, mm -hmm. Estes Prickle. He starts preaching about hail. Yeah. That's. Uh, H A Y U L L. If you are playing along with one of the Pope on Film fantasy leagues, <laughs> so he is totally in the beginning of this film at Mount Sinai and not just Vasquez Rock outside LA. No, it's totally Mount Sinai. The film is basically one long sermon from fake Ross Perot, while mm -hmm. untalented Christian church members put on fake beards and pretend that they can act. Mm -hmm. In the first reenactment, Moses, with the fake beard, 
opens up the gates of hell to smite his enemies, and I just love it. Then it cuts back to Estes Prickle. Does that shock you? Yeah. Well, it should. Moses is... Moses' beard is so fake. It looks Donald Trump's hair look real. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, no, yeah. It's amazing. Seriously fake. Fucking yeah. Moses' beard. So after after the first reenactment, you get to like the like the main crux, the main story arc, which deals with Estes Prickle is at home and he's visited by two hippie liberal bikers. Yes. With evil liberal ideas about the Bible. Hey, Their man. names are Tim and Tim, to be fair. I live Tim for is, today, man. Yeah, Tim and Ken. One gets saved, one does not get saved. Heaven and, and hell are right here, man. The fucking lines are lifted from a goddamn Jack Chick track. Like, yeah, back literally. In Back in 1971, it was commonplace <laughs> for hippie bikers to show up unannounced at strangers' houses to talk to you about the Bible. Mm-hmm. That just happened all the time. Yeah. That happened all the time to everyone. I know. I have to turn away like three dozen. Week. Yeah, yeah, because you're like in your 50s. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know yeah. what I'm showing. Sure yeah. So these two hippie bikers have some real evil liberal ideas about the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, two items, to, two guys, one rebellious, and the rebellious guy really does have like a like a like a seventies grizzly Adams made for TV movie. Yeah, all he wearing a denim onesie, like mm-hmm. he should be singing the song "Rock Me Gently, mm-hmm. Rock Me Slowly." Take it easy, or maybe just convoy, maybe like a CW McCall vibe. Oh like yeah, maybe like a skinny Mitchell. This, this is Rubber Ducky. <laughs> yeah, like a skinny fit Mitchell. Yes. So he's the rebellious one. When he and was Buford Pusser, walking motherfucking tall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the other one, the second guy, he's Tim. He's the one that I think looks suspiciously like me. And I'm I'm not sure if it's maybe like me in, in, yeah, in a different time. Yeah, but but he is he's, he's just kind of he's just kind of like a mutant to you. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe what I'm thinking is in the future somebody tries to clone me, but it's like a bad clone. Yeah. And my bad clone goes back in time to be in a Christian scare film mm-hmm. knowing that I will be talking about it on the podcast in the past. Yeah. Which will now be his future when he goes into the past. And you would get a little heavier and a little shorter. Yeah. 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 I just created a Christopher Nolan film. Just <laughs> FYI. That was that was a Christopher Nolan film. You just get Christian Bale to play me and boom. I just that's how you make a Christopher Nolan film. And I did a Sarah Silverman callback joke. Yeah. So Estes Prickle dueling jokes. That's what you get here at the Pope on film, okay? Yeah. Dueling yeah. jokes, okay? Yeah. You know what that means? You know what that translates to in American dollars, which are pretty much valueless now. Um, double the jokes. Double yeah. the flavor. Double the flavor. <laughs> so Estes Prickle invites these two evil hippie biker liberal strangers to his church to hear him preach. Yeah. And the guy who was me says, sure. But the rebellious one says, oh, no, man. I got to live my life free. Man, when I go to hell, this is the part that pissed me off is when the rebellious one said, hey, when I get to hell, a bunch of my friends are going to be waiting for me. Mm Because that's exactly what one of my ex-girlfriends said. Yeah. She would invite people to the party she was going to throw in hell. And it's like, oh, I get it. You're cute and funny. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Was she like 12? No, she was like a stoned 23-year-old. Yeah. So. One, so, of, those, one of those high school transitional people. Yeah. Right? It's, it, it's, like, it's like she she's 
she's either going to go hippie or she's going to go Satanist. One of those yeah. two. But at that point in their lives, you just can't make that call yet. Yeah. You know? So, so, so I say sure to go and see Esther Sprinkle preach, but the rebellious guy says no, and they both bike off together, and pretty immediately... They get into an accident, and the rebellious one is violently beheaded. Yes. So what does the biker who is me do? I'll tell you what he doesn't do. He doesn't call the police. He doesn't wait for help. He doesn't, I, I don't know, take care of the body. Yeah. He heads straight, straight to Estes Prickles Church to yeah. ask if his buddy is going to hell. But there was an accident. My buddy just died. Sucks beheaded. to be you. Literally. <laughs> literally. He died about 45 seconds ago, and I immediately came to your church. I just need to know if he's going to be all right. And Estes Prickle literally goes, yeah, sorry, your friend's in hell. Yeah. 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 What yeah. a scumbag thing. Yeah. What? No, yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah, what you know kind of scumbag a, a are you? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, you know your friend that died literally a minute ago? Yes, he is burning in the lake of fire right now. Mm -hmm. Eleanor is pissed and... She really wants the bananas and all she's going to do is Yeah. Yeah. Eleanor it has been doing this thing where she wants bananas and she wants bananas and so you give her a banana and she goes thanks and then starts eating the peel <laughs> and she's like oh no I don't want to eat this thing inside oh hell no no I'm eating I'm here for the peel have I ever taken have I ever taken that stand on this show before what? little kids are stupid yeah yeah okay Gargoyle. She wants, <laughs> yeah, she just wants to chew something, I guess. Yeah. So, well, I don't think like, the peel is going to hurt her, is it? No, it's just going to taste like crap, but, you know, That's whatever. her problem. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. then the guy who... I mean, me, what? Are you giving her all, all of her food four stars? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not... I'm not... I'm not a... I'm not a Michelin... <laughs> rated chef here. <laughs> Let her eat so, the peel. <laughs> so then the guy who whose friend literally just died sits and listens to the sermon uh -huh. of Estes Prickle, which include various scenes uh, like a king being sent to hell yeah. where one of the brain guys from late Mystery Science Theater seasons tortures bad actors with chocolate sauce on their faces. Ooh, scary. I just got saved, y'all. That oh yeah. my god, I just got saved. Yeah. But but you know, head. through through the whole thing, okay? Setting aside that this is completely a scummy thing to do to somebody whose friend just got decapitated just then and now Literally you're going to explain up. all about your friend his friend going to hell. Okay, putting that aside, he did it very well. He he ramped he did. it nicely, you yeah. know, and you could yeah. tell when he was coming to the closer, you know. Yeah, you could see yeah. it coming, man, because it was just getting it was just just shovels of horseshit. Yeah, just just Watching. getting laid on thicker and thicker. Yeah. Watching this video, though, I really did learn a lot. For example, did you know that everyone in the Middle East is white? I did not uh, know that. Yes, I did know yeah. that. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, and, everybody is white. Yeah. Everybody and is they, white. And everyone in the Middle East also has Southern accents. That's another part that I like. Yes. Well, hey there, Nicodemus. <laughs> Well, hey there, Caiaphas. What what say you about this Jesus feller? 
Well, I reckon we done be crucifying him. Oh, well, all right then. Hey, you gotta, are y'all going to the party? There's going to be women and wine. You really got to appreciate Southern Jews. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fact. So many <laughs> Southern Jews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. La Hyam, y'all. <laughs> But then in the midst of all of this, you would get you would get the character who was really fucking trying to act. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. So there's all these like horrible actors. And, then and that, just, that just makes you look so much worse by comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So so there's all the like horrible actors and then you get to the. No, I refuse to accept the word of Jesus. Yeah. And, like, you, oh, and, and you just look at him and you're like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> you definitely starred in the community theater production of 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 Godspell. <laughs> Didn't I see you at the Ren Fest? Yeah. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> another thing. Another thing that I learned. Yeah. <laughs> another thing that I... Seriously, Eleanor, did you come in? Like, I went into this room to get away from your screaming. Did you come in here just to scream at me some more? Is that why you came in here? You can't eat the bottle of shampoo. You're just looking for things to to F with now, Eleanor. Jeez, crazy. Chew on the doorknob for a while. She's not tall enough. We need to get a, Uh... a clubbed footstool. Any any Here. any door stops, uh, especially the no. springy kind. Because frankly, I still love no. those. Here, I don't think we have any of those actually. Here's another thing that I learned from from this week's Christian scare film. Yes, this is something I did not realize. In hell, the main torture that occurs in hell is the fact that while you're in hell. They just have a 1970s haunted house sound effects album in a loop. <laughs> so, so the main torture is just the fact that throughout the entire time you're in hell, you just hear the sound effects. Oh! And I made some predictions about this week's homework. Yep. Yep. I, I, I remember what two of them were. I think there were three. Forget what the third one is, but I nailed Night of the Living Dead soundtrack. Yeah, Night of the Living Dead soundtrack. Nailed. You also nailed that there was going to be a lot of fire, yeah, and that there was going to be like a like a proscenium scrim or whatever. There was going to be like a like it, like that didn't happen, but you really didn't nail the predictions of this. That's like what I was saying. Like it was basically everything I was hoping it was going to be. Well, I week. wanted to see. I want, and I came close. But I wanted to see demons with just rubber masks. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. didn't get that, but I got some good pancake makeup. Yes. So I kind yeah. of felt satisfied with that. Yeah. So there's a lot of stories in The Burning Hell, but the main one concerns Lazarus, the beggar, the Jesus lover, and the David Bowie album. Yes. And and Lazarus and his dealings with the rich Southern king Diabetes. Mm-hmm. I believe his name is Diabetes. I'm not sure. They they all have accents, and it's difficult. It's so weird, it, you know, working here at the bookstore in Oklahoma, and and it's like I'm in the middle of America. I'm in America. <laughs> I'm in the United States of America, and I'm speaking with other Americans. And I go, can I help you find anything? And he goes, yeah, you, y'all got, y'all got anything? I'm, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? Them, them <laughs> books by that guy who, who, who's in that movie. And it's like, how is it that you live, that you were born like 300 miles away, and yet I can't understand the words you are saying? <laughs> we're speaking the same language, and yet I can't understand a word of your English. It's not like you come from a different country. You come from a neighboring state. Mm-hmm. 
how can I not understand a word that's coming out of your mouth? I'm so confused. But they do have those same people in England. Yeah. Yeah. I believe they're usually Scottish, but I can't swear to that. Yeah. And they usually tend to be the more rural country people. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. So Lazarus, they just mumble with an English accent. <laughs> yeah. So Lazarus and diabetes. Uh, oh my God, this is an amazing movie. Lots of fire and screaming, yes. and oh, one of my favorite parts. And, and, and the tormenting told, of the damned. Yeah, it had the and, tormenting of the damned. Yeah, and uh, uh, people getting their their faces bitten off by maggots, and. Um, the devil with a lot of uh, uh, theater makeup on. Yeah. And one of the things that I was really happy, I was hoping that this would be in the film, and it was, the film also had a white-skinned, white-robed, long, white-bearded god. Yeah. <laughs> I was really hoping that this film would feature God and it would be an old white dude in a yeah. robe with a long, white beard. And, oh, they nailed it. I'm like, mm -hmm. Yes! Christian scare film score. <laughs> so this guy, Estes Prickle, is 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 really the best way you can describe him is that he is literally what you would call uh, a hellfire and brimstone preacher. Oh God, he God. was selling it. Yeah, the guy literally believes in a literal hell with a literal lake of fire and you are literally going to burn and yada 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 the guy the so so the guy who looks like me doesn't like the sermon so estes prickle literally starts talking about how his friend is in hell yeah like the guy really does not know the guy doesn't understand sensitivity no you know no no sensitivity in the love of jesus <laughs> yeah I'm like what the fuck estes prickle for a guy whose name is estes prickle you sure aren't sensitive to other people's emotions <laughs> not cool estes prickle no no so, so it was really i mean he, he was like there is no tactful way of saying, and you, nobody speaks like a southern preacher either. Yeah, you know, so like, does it come on the DVDs or something? There's like lessons that teach you how to speak like that. Yeah, because nobody yeah. speaks like a southern preacher. But but yeah, yeah, he was getting so into it. I, 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 what I was really hoping for that he would just give one of those little skips you know how every now and then one of the pastors because all of a sudden they'll get like a bolt from the holy spirit and just do like a, yeah. a little skip step <laughs> yeah yeah I, but no skip step I, I wasn't holding my breath for it because i'm sure even a skip step is is sinful um, oh yeah no. but i can dream can i yeah yeah I know. So, uh, so one of the last bits is a montage of kind of like a greatest hits album of biblical murderers. Yeah. It's like, here are the greatest, here are the greatest hits of Bible murders. Yeah. So they have like a like a bunch of different stories in the story of Salome and Jezebel and uh, John the Baptist and Cain, Undertaker, Ultimate Warrior, Papa Shango, yeah, the Bushwhackers, Andre the Giant. Uh, specifically, one of my favorite parts of the movie is when they reenact the story of Cain and Abel. And they're in like the middle of a field somewhere, and Cain's sitting on the floor, and Cain stands up when his uh, no Abel's sitting on the on the floor in, in like the field, yeah. And Cain shows up, and Abel stands up, and it's like, hey, it's my brother Cain, let's hug. Yeah. Well, you can tell 
that they didn't think about it beforehand because the field that Abel was sitting on was wet because when Abel goes to hug Kane, it looks like he just pissed himself. Mm -hmm. Big fan of that scene. Big fan of the scene where Kane pisses himself. Yes. Abel yes. pisses himself. But, but here's the thing about that scene, though. Okay? So they're there, and you can see the evil gleam in Kane's eye. You know we never get Kane's side of the story about this at all. What if Abel yeah. was just a real big what if his name was Jose? Okay. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, no, we he might have had it no. coming. Okay. But anyway, then we see Kane just fucking cold cock Abel with a big fucking log. Yeah. And then they cut to they cut to Pringles and he's he's and Kane choked Abel to death. Dude. You just showed me get show, showed me him getting hit in the head with a log. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, keep uh, your bullshit consistent here. <laughs> maybe this is just my fandom speaking, but I'm pretty sure that I heard, at least in the version of the Burn Hell that I saw, once Cain knocks out Abel with a mm. giant log, you could hear people chanting. Lucha, 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 Lucha. <laughs> so that was exciting for me, at least. I might have gotten a different version. Yeah, you may have gotten a different version. So then the guy who looks like me has a vision where he goes to hell and he's getting stabbed. And it was so fake. It was so fake when he's yeah. in hell and he's getting stabbed by the guy who cut John the Baptist's head. Uh, and, and he's getting stabbed, and there's, like, blood. It was so fake that I expected afterwards to hear someone say, have you ever heard of an Egyptian feast? <laughs> that's, that's the level of movie we're talking about here. Yes. So the guy who looks like me comes to and Estes Prickle lays on the charm, and the guy who looks like me is finally saved. Yay! Alternate uh -huh. dimension me has been saved! The end. Mm -hmm. There's even an interesting scene at the end where Estes Prickle is staring at the audience and literally calls out the fact that, like, uh, some of you might think that it's wrong to be scared into being saved. The jerky guy, right? Are you talking about the jerky guy? What are you talking about? There was one guy in the movie who was also kind of delivering the word of the Lord. Darker hair, and he looked like he... It looked like they started showing a film in the middle of this film. Yeah. And he was he was talking about Jesus, and he was talking about hell, but, like, he kept, like, hunching down to, like, look at the, look at the camera... And he kept like jerking, like he was like having petty mall fucking seizures. Yeah, that might be Estes Prickle. He looks he he looks like Ross Perot and Criswell had a baby. No, this dude had darker hair, and he was just like an insert. Yeah, then I don't know. Was he wearing glasses? He really looked like he used car sales when I think is fair. Yeah. Not sure. It's all getting hazy now. <laughs> yeah. But there's an interesting side note. Yeah. Um, there's an interesting side story that I wanted to mention. I wanted to talk about a guy, a very, 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 very extremely popular Christian preacher by the name of Rob Bell. Okay. He's basically the cool young Christian preacher. If you are Christian and you're in your 20s or 30s, you've heard of Rob Bell. He's the cool hip Christian guy to be. He's written a bunch so, of so books. The, so the new up. Kurt Cameron, are you saying? Kind of. He He's he's the head of this massive mega church, and his mega church's preachings are are um are um uh, like beamed to various other ch churches throughout America. Okay. Like there's a small church here in Nowhere, Oklahoma where if I went to church, it would be, uh, you know, we would sing. 
<laughs> in the church. And then some guy would talk a little bit, and then a screen would come down, and they would basically just telecast Rob Bell's <laughs> church service. So Does it's Christian, happen? it's Christian McDonald's. Yeah. There are yeah. little franchises open up all over the place. Yeah, this guy, this guy is 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 really cool, and he's trying to develop a more liberal, open view of Christianity. So a lot of old school diehard Christians fucking hate this guy. Oh, he's like been that, on like Oprah. that, like that Ron Pavlov guy. Yeah, he's a, Rob Bell's been on Oprah, and he sells products, and he's really cool, and yeah. and he does lectures, and people like him, and yada yada yada. But he released a book a couple of years back that really pissed off Christians and, and caused a, a huge rift in the world of Christianity because he wrote this book about hell uh -huh. where basically his views of hell are exactly what the liberal bikers say when they first meet Estes Prickle. Basically, Rob Bell wrote this big popular modern day Christian book all about God loves us. He loves us so much that if you're a really nice guy and you help the poor and you're an atheist, yeah, you're not going to fucking hell. See, so, okay. Okay. See, I, now I would have to look into this dude some, some more because this might be a dude that I'm willing to support. Like again, yeah. that John Pavlov Pavlovsky, I forget if his last name confuses me. Who yeah. who who is a Christian writes to Christians, and I I share a lot of his things often, and is basically calling out Christians on their bullshit. Yeah, you know. So like, and he's like, leave the gay people alone. Black lives do matter, you know. And I'm just like, you know what? Those are the only problems I really have with Christianity. You yeah. get a pass. You yeah. get a pass, you know? Yeah. You, you still believe in a sky god, but fuck, it's not hurting me now. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, that's, that's basically Rob Bell. He's just this cool young guy with tattoos and, you know. I'm not going to approve him. Until I see him for myself. Yeah. But he's 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 trying to make a more friendly, open, liberal Christianity. And so old school conservative Christians hate Rob Bell's fucking guts. But but yeah, basically his views are like God loves everybody. God's not going to like torture you into a hideous life of hellfire and brimstone if you're a nice guy. Like, it, like, you know, it's you're not immediately going to burn in hell just because you didn't go to a church if you're good. Like, okay, maybe Hitler's in hell. See, I but... look at it this way, okay? I look at it this way. Even if I'm wrong and all of this horseshit is true, Have you ever seen the Buddhist monks burn themselves to death? Yeah. And they just sit there in meditation the whole time that they are burning to death. And then you saw the chart of the one and all the zeros. I got time to learn that. Yeah. Hell then becomes a picnic. <laughs> yeah. And my view I, I of got the nothing but time on my hands, it's worth a shot. <laughs> my view of the afterlife is basically uh the same view of the afterlife from the Discworld series of sci fi comedy books. Essentially, whatever you believe happens to you after you die is what happens to you after you die. If there yeah. are people in hell, it is because they believe they need to be in hell. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you believe happens after you die is what happens to you after you die. That's why there are Christians out there who are like, I died and I died 
and I and I went to heaven, and there were pearly gates, and I'm like, yeah, because you've been trained that that's what happens after you die. You know? Yeah. It, <coughs> yeah. If, it's if, if just you that. It's here, just that. Go ahead and project. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I I have held this theory for a long time, but then I have some. I read a, a scientific journal to back it up. Mm-hmm. That when you die, your brain releases certain chemicals. The same yes. chemical releases when you dream. Yes. So when those people who have been brought back from their brief moment of death, and they say, oh, no, I saw the light, I met Jesus, the pearly gates, yada, yada, yada. Those are chemicals in your brain fucking with you. Yeah. And basically and, letting you dream until you die. And I've, so, heard, and I've heard more specifically that they believe it might be DMT. That it releases, which is like, I'm down with that. Right? I am, like, I am down with that. Yeah. And then that leads you to the discussion of, are we all just dying? And this is our dream life. That's, I have a fucked up dream life. No offense, honey. Yeah. Can't, I I that, haven't had a good dream life in a while, but I used to have an excellent dream life. <laughs> yeah. I would wake up and immediately write that down because I had a whole story, you yeah. know, yeah. and I would have to get it down before a, a lot of my stuff has come from dreams. And I, I used to could because mostly because I haven't tried in a while, but I used to be yeah. able to lucid dream and I started nice. lucid dreaming. This, this is, this is how you do it. Okay. Yeah. I started lucid dreaming when I started writing on a regular yep. basis, you know, because writing is rewriting. So I would be writing and I would be like, no, I got to change that. I got to change that. I got to change that. And then I just started doing that shit when I was in, when I was dreaming. Yeah. You know, yeah, but, got- but it's kind of, it's kind of yet like, you're not really completely lucid. You're, you're, you're lucid. Like you're drunk. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're manipulating your environment, but you're not doing it in the most intelligent way. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I never flew. It never dawned on me. <laughs> hmm. I, I, when I was in high school, I made, I spent like a year and a half. And you wake up tired because you're not really asleep. Yeah. When I was in high school, I spent like a year and a half reading every book I could about lucid dreaming and writing down every dream that I had and trying as hard as I could to lucid dream only because there was a a girl that I was obsessed with and I thought I was in love with her and I wanted to be with her and she just friend zoned me hard. So I thought Mm -hmm. maybe if I can control my dreams, I can like be with this girl in my dreams. And I got so good at it that I would dream and I'd be like, okay, I'm in my room. Okay, I'm in my room with her. Okay, we're laying down in bed. Okay, she comes to kiss me. But whenever it would get to any, I could control everything. But once it came to anything physical, she would just start shaking her head no. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, I got so close, but I'm, 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 I'm friend zoning myself at this point. <laughs> Like she told me, she well, didn't was that the same morning? So even when I'm dreaming, the her that I dream of is just like, yeah, no, no, we're in no way doing this. Is that the same Mormon oh, chick? Oh no, not the Mormon oh, okay. chick. No. Let me do anything. Was it after the Mormon chick? It was during and after the Mormon chick. Oh, okay, because that sounds like because that's what she did. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of sounds like your brain was holding on to the script. Yeah. You know, you know what I bet would work? Huh. Video games. Yeah. And especially something like Mario or something like that. Something very colorful, something very imaginative. Because I, I, I'm sure you must have experienced, you play a game for a while and you go to sleep, you can see the game. Oh, yeah. You know? But also with a game your brain is already used to controlling that environment. You said you wanted to mention something during the homework. During the homework, yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, so I've been eyeballing this thing uh, on Netflix for a while. You know one of those things you see on Netflix and you're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's basically me every time I get on Netflix and I see The League. Netflix yeah. really wants me to watch The League. <laughs> Steve, are you ready to watch The League yet? We've got The League right here. Are you ready to see The League? Yeah, maybe tomorrow. And and I finally broke down and I gave it a shot. Okay. Occult Crime Files. That's so weird. Just today, I put that on my list. Yeah? Just today. Let Just me... I was, I was looking through Netflix to see if I could find some sort of movie that maybe I didn't see before. And God damn it, I saw Occult Crime Files, and I'm like, okay, if this is a documentary, we're going to do this for the podcast. Oh, wait, it's a TV show. Yeah. Hey, what the hell? I'm putting this on my list. I did that like a couple of hours ago. Let me tell you, I, I, oh, I, I hate this show. Really? Oh, I hate that you're going to fucking love it. I hate this show. They, 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 they hit all the major th- themes. They literally mentioned the satanic panic. They literally mentioned these. <laughs> yeah. It had dungeons and dragons. It's got goth chicks. It's got vampires, and I'm like, there's probably a grain of truth in there somewhere. But it is, it is, it is horrible. It is such bullshit. Like through and oh, through. Oh, I'm excited to watch this. Like through and through. I absolutely love it. And it does have very slight very slight it has a bit of a a right wing leaning really and it so so what scares me about the show is like the alex jones effect yeah i, I now know there are people watching this show and they are believing this oh yeah absolutely and that's the frightening part yeah that's the frightening part, but but oh, they will they will utter lines such as, and this is the first episode, and it's not really major. It's like, then he started studying yoga, acupuncture, oh. and organic foods. Oh. yeah, that's basically every angry preacher at a college. Mm-hmm. With one of those big banners. Now this is portraying itself as a news show. Okay. Yeah. Is it British? It looked like it was British. I don't think it's British. It may be from oh. overseas somewhere because their experts do not speak English. Okay. But they're talking about they're talking about this case in. Italy, this case in Italy, okay? This is presenting itself on a news show. And and the name, it, it was a heavy metal band, go figure, that played a lot of goth clubs, go figure. Um, and the name of the band was Circus of Satan. Until we get into the story a little further, and I'm like, wait a second. It's not Circus of Satan. This is Italy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Italy. I mean, I mean, wouldn't they say it's blah, 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 which translates as Circus of Satan, and then use Circus of Satan after that? Yeah. They would if it was news, but it's not. It's horseshit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh god, I gotta watch this. I'm excited now. There there are no clips whatsoever of oh any local news footage or oh, pictures of, of newspapers from where this happened or 
anything like that. Everything is a reenactment and they have experts. They have the same experts every week. Yeah. What exactly are you an expert of? You're an expert yeah, in all of these cases? Yeah, I'm an expert. I don't know what I'm an expert of, but I'm an expert of something. <laughs> so I felt that was very relevant and oh god, oh, yeah, no, it is Oh, it's it's so bad. It's so deliciously bad. And it will totally insult your intelligence too. Bonus. Oh, I gotta watch that. That's oh, great. It does talk down to you. Yeah. No, that's in my wheelhouse right there. And it just has that very <sighs> dirty voyeuristic feel, you know, just very lurid, you know? Yeah. Where where everything about this show is just so over the top. You know? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because for a while Bella was obsessed with this lurid supposedly true crime show on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Called, like, Families Who Kill or something like yeah. that. It was all about family members who snap and kill all the other family members, and it's like, okay, number one, this whole show is just so over-the-top, ridiculously stupid, and number two, I think I need to, to have an adult present when you're watching this, because I'm starting to worry about myself. Yeah. 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 I... I... <sighs> I don't I don't want to know who's masturbating over this show. It's yeah. bad enough that I know somebody is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. As the blood ran out of her head, half naked and sweating, chest heaving. Yeah. Like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a second. You're describing a murder? <laughs> okay. Right? That sounds like that sounds like thirty fifty shades of gray shit. I I I I, I fucking hated this show so much I am through that whole first season. Yeah. Just blew the doors off of it. Might nice. go back for a second helping. <laughs> cool. And that is it for this week's homework assignment. And I honestly and sincerely Not hope that you. your eyes, minds, and bank accounts have all been suitably opened. Yes. Ah, uh, but don't think for one fat second that you're getting out of here that easily, my friend. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, with your blessing, of course, Mr. Rebunsibility. Okay. For next week, I figured, what the hell? Why don't we just pull a dory and just keep swimming in the crazy Christian world of Mr. Ron Orman with his off-the-wall communist scare film, which is also on YouTube. Yeah. If footmen tire you, what will horses do? Hmm? If, yes, yes. Well, you know, and on top of it, I think we're getting really good at them too. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I I think we, we have learned what to immediately be looking for yeah. when, in, when setting down to one of these absolute treats. Oh yeah. Of and apparently um fuckery. Apparently this one, if foot men tire you what will horses do, goes much farther than the burning hell did. Yeah. So I'm excited to see because if footmen tire you, what will horses do came first? And it, it basically, this film is to communism what Rockets Your Decision was to rock and roll. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's apparently way crazier than this one is. So I'm really excited to see it. I haven't seen it before. Okay. But it's, send, it's, send me the link, please. This one, I tried taking a stab at looking at it, and I kept getting Twisted Sister. Eleanor, it's okay, baby. It's okay. What, you want more food? You're, you're taking a large portion of my food. 
I can't eat anything on my own. We already established this earlier in the show. <laughs> Mommy is, is looking for your uh, sippy cup right now, okay? And also, Mommy just has the boobs, so... <laughs> Mommy's a walking sippy cup, basically. <laughs> So, so join us next week for more homework assignments with the Pope on film. Cut and print on that. I'm going to see what's wrong with the baby for a second. Baby, okay. what's wrong? Baby, it's okay. What's wrong? You got so much food on your plate. I'm going to eat this one. What's wrong? Don't you ever laugh at the hearse goodbye? Or it's you out. may be the next one to die. They wrap you up in bloody sheets. And bury you under six feet deep. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out. Into your stomach and out your mouth. What do you want, baby? Uh, forget the rest. What do you want? You're tired. You're just tired. It's okay to be tired, you know? You can't have my podcast notes. Why is my why are my podcast notes the only thing you want? Huh? No, we want down. I don't think she wants down. Because they're important to you. Yeah, Dad. basically. It's like a cat. Do you want me to put you down? Do you want me to put you down? I'm gonna try to put you down. Let's see how that works. <laughs> There, yeah, you're down. Look at that, it's amazing. Okay, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um.